ladies and gentlemen, Dennis Day. Oh, that makes life be worthwhile. Dwells in your eyes and the spell of your smile. Dennis Day is brought to you by Palm Olive Soap and Colgate Dental Cream. Palm Olive Soap, your beauty hope, and Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth. <laughs> the Dennis Day Show with Barbara Eiler, B. Benaderet, Dink Trout, George Dooning in the orchestra, and yours truly, Vern Smith, is written by Frank Galen and stars our popular young singer in A Day in the Life of Dennis Day. <laughs> Here's Dennis to sing, It's a Most Unusual Day. It's a most unusual day, feel like throwing my worries away. As an old native born Californian would say, it's a most unusual day. There's a most unusual sky. Not a sign of a cloud passing by And if I want to sing Throw my heart in the ring It's a most unusual day There are people meeting people There is sunshine everywhere There are people greeting people And a feeling of spring in the air Unusual time I keep feeling my temperature climb If my heart won't behave in the usual way Well, there's only one thing to say It's a most unusual, most unusual, most unusual day Now, here is a very important announcement. Palm Olive Soap is giving away prizes worth $67,000, a grand prize of $25,000 in one lump sum, or $100 a month for life. And that's not all. There are over 2,000 prizes in Palm Olive's big treasure chest contest. Ford Sedan, Westinghouse Laundromat, From Silver Fox Scarves, Toastmaster Toasters. And it's easy to enter. Complete the last line of this jingle. A fresher, brighter-looking skin is something I would like to win. I'll get palm olive soap today. Da 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 da. Write your last line on a plain sheet of paper or use an official entry blank giving complete rules obtainable at your dealers. Include your own and dealer's name and address and mail with the big word palm olive from the front of the wrapper of one regular and one bath size cake of palm olive soap to box 92, New York 8, New York. Now, here's the jingle once more. A fresher brighter-looking skin is something I would like to win. I'll get palm olive soap today. da 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 da, da. Mail your entry to Palm Olive, Box 92, New York 8, New York. Get palm olive soap for a lovelier complexion. Remember, doctors prove palm olive's beauty results. <laughs> Well, we've seldom seen a more glorious fall morning than this one in the little town of Weaverville. Brilliant sunshine turns each autumn leaf to gold, and there's a tang in the air like wine. No wonder there's a sparkle in every eye, a carefree smile on every face. No wonder pure joy of living... Well, wait a minute. What's this? Well, there's our young hero, Dennis Day, walking into the Anderson house with the most woe-begone expression we've ever seen. My goodness, he hasn't looked like this since the junior G-men discharged him for being overage. I wonder what's happened. Why, Dennis, it's only 10 o'clock. What are you doing home from the shoe store? I've got a good notion not to go back to that shoe store ever, Mildred. The boss and I had words this morning. Words? What do you mean, words? I said good morning, and he said you're fired. <laughs> Dennis, no. 
Well, what on earth did you do? Oh, I guess it was that order I bought from a salesman without consulting the boss. Gosh, I still think 300 pairs of ladies' mules with fur on them at 50 cents a pair is a good buy. Well, gee, it seems so to me, too. Sure. How did I know they were all size 13 and a half? <laughs> Dear, isn't it just awful the bad... Oh, hi, Daddy. Good morning, children. <laughs> Something wrong, Mildred? You look a little upset. Oh, Dennis is out of work again, Daddy. Yeah, it's getting pretty darn discouraging going from one job to another, Mr. Anderson. Oh, no. All you need is a little responsibility, my boy. Until a young man gets married, he's like a deflated balloon, incapable of rising. Ah, uh, someday you'll find your gas bag just as I have. <laughs> Daddy's right, Dennis. I've heard him say many times that he was incomplete until he met Mother. Sure. She was what finished me off, all right. <laughs> oh, Daddy. Oh, well... Just a little belly laugh to cheer up Dennis. Now, uh, why not drop in at that employment agency downtown, my boy? I'm sure they'll locate something for you. Gee, do you really think so? Why, of course. And then you're, when you're finished, drop over at the hotel. I'll be down there on business today, and we can have lunch together. Okay, I'll see you around noon. But try not to be too disappointed if the employment agency doesn't find something for you immediately, won't you, Dennis? Sure, I will. Remember, you can always collect your unemployment insurance. After all, $20 a week isn't to be sneezed at. No, especially when it's $3 more than I've been making. <laughs> so I thought if you could find me something steady, I... Why, of course, young man. We'll do our very best for you. Oh, thank you, sir. Uh, just sit right down on that couch while I read off a list of occupations, and when you hear one that appeals to you, let me know. Ready? Accountant, actuary, architect. Who? Architect? No, Lou Spring. <laughs> uh, yes, it does do that once in a while. I think it's only a flesh wound. <laughs> good, good. Uh, perhaps we'd better get your vital statistics for our records before we go any further. Now, your name again? Dennis Day. Oh, yes. Your age and weight, please. 22 and 159. The larger number is my weight. <laughs> yes, I had a hunch it might be. As far as school is concerned, how far did you go, Mr. Day? Three blocks. <laughs> Mr. Day, I'm beginning to adore you. And now this next question usually gets a plain, dull yes or no for an answer. <laughs> but somehow I'm counting on you heavily. Uh, tell me, are you a white-collar worker? Well, usually, but of course you know how the laundries are these days. <laughs> I knew you wouldn't let me down. <laughs> and now then, uh, what was your last job? Oh, I sold shoes. What kind? Right ones and left ones. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, people with three feet were just out of luck, huh? Yeah, I guess so. Uh, shall we continue? This is fun. <laughs> Are you by any chance adept with your hands, Mr. Day? Well, I can put them in front of a light and make a rabbit shadow on the wall. <laughs> well, bully for you. <laughs> But uh, what I meant was, are you skilled at any manual labor? Gee, no, I'm afraid not. Then we have to rely on your mental attributes in placing you, huh? Yes, sir. We're in trouble, Mr. Day. <laughs> Gosh, really? Really. However, suppose you leave your number, and if something turns up, I'll give you a call. Oh, swell. I'll be at the Weaverville Hotel for the next hour. After that, call 227. Fine. If a man answers, I won't hang up. By some wild stretch of the imagination, it might be you. <laughs> Sam, I'm telling you, this hotel lobby has given me the willies. What's the matter with people in these tank towns? Ain't they buying phony oil properties anymore? Oh, Duke, it ain't like the old days. The oil racket's been done to death. Nowadays, you need a real standout dope. 
Yeah, but you'd think a town this size would have at least one prime... Hey, Sam. Huh? See the... <laughs> You see the kid over there waiting for someone, the one with them big, innocent, brown eyes? You mean the guy over there twiddling his thumbs? Yeah. See how hard he has to concentrate to keep him from colliding? Uh-huh. Hey, look. That beautiful brunette with the wire hair terrier is walking right in front of him. Oh, brother, has she got gorgeous legs, huh? Look at the kid's head time. Yeah, but he's looking at the wire haired terrier. <laughs> That's our man. Go to work. Uh, pardon me, young man, but I just don't seem able to place your face. Well, really, it's just where everybody else is. <laughs> uh, no, no, no. What? I am trying... I'm afraid I've got some bad news, J.B. Yeah? Oil has just been discovered on our land in Texas. Oh, no! Oh, unless we can unload that land somehow, we'll be stuck with another million dollars. This is stuck... Look, young man, you don't understand. This puts us in a higher income tax bracket. Sure, and right now we owe the government so much money that they don't know whether to throw us into jail or recognize us as a foreign power. <laughs> oh, if we could only find someone to take this land off our hands, say, for a measly two bucks an acre. Well, if you're really in trouble, fellas, I'd... Be... A good boy, now. How much land do you want? Well, wait till I figure out how much cash I can lay my hands on. Let's see now. Could I get much oil out of about two and a half yards? We should have known, Sam. Yeah, come on, Duke. Ah, forget it, kid. We're looking for a big... Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. Gosh, this would be a wonderful thing for Mrs. Anderson. She might buy the whole hundred acres. Mrs. Anderson? Yeah, I'm going to marry her daughter. And if I let her in on this, she'll have something to thank me for. Well, I'll, I'll tell you what we'll do, my boy. We'll give you this deed to the property. And if this Mrs. Anderson buys it, just turn the 200 bucks over to us and we'll pay you a 10% commission. Ten dollars. Oh, boy. Thanks, gentlemen. <laughs> Gosh, Mrs. Anderson always wondered whether I had any brains or not. Well, I'll stop that in a hurry. <laughs> We'll continue our day in the life of Dennis Day in just a moment. Meanwhile, here's Dennis to sing With a Twist of the Wrist. With a twist of the wrist, with your lips that insist, with that come hither look in your eye. Just when I think we're through, you do magic and make me love you. At the drop of a hat, it's as easy as that, with the merest attempt at a sigh. When I'm sure you're untrue, you do magic and make me love you. Yes, I'm just, after all, at your beck, at your call. Seems twill never be for you and me all over. With a twist of the wrist, I'd be back on your list. Doesn't matter how hard I may try. How can I get away from your very persuasive allure? When with a twist of the wrist, I'm yours. Well, Dennis has been promised a commission if he can sell Mrs. Anderson 100 acres of Texas oil land at $2 an acre. Not knowing, of course, that he's been taken in by two phony confidence men. And because the sale is so important to him, he's been remembering the main points of the salesmanship course he took in high school. Never force the issue. Wait until the thing you're selling comes up naturally and normally in the conversation. Let's watch him put this technique into operation. Nice day, isn't it, Mrs. Anderson? Yes. A little warm for October. Maybe. Think prices will continue rising? If they do, taxes better start coming down. Mrs. Anderson, I'm glad you brought that up. Brought what up? Taxes, greatest state in the union. <laughs> <laughs> what? Boy, what oil lands. Why, if you could buy just one little bit of property... Oh, keep quiet. <laughs> Too abrupt, huh? Okay, let's try it again. Nice day, isn't it? Dennis, I'm warning you. I'm in a black mood. I have a cold. I'm glad you brought that up. Brought what up? Black gold. 
talking about? Well, Mrs. Anderson, I know where you can buy some Texas oil property for only $2 an acre. Oil property? Dennis Day, do you take me for an idiot? What's that got to do with it? <laughs> do you really think I'm dumb enough to fall for a thing like oil property? But this will make you a millionaire, Mrs. Anderson, for an investment of only two bucks an acre, you Oh, can... stop. I wouldn't touch a thing like that with a ten-foot pole. It's the most ridiculous thing that... Oh, I'll get it. Hello? Hello, Mr. Day. Uh, this is Mr. Nelson at the employment agency. Who is it, Dennis? Oh, it's for me, Mrs. Anderson. I never thought I'd be saying this to you, Mr. Day, but I have a job for you. Oh, gosh, that's wonderful. What's wonderful? Oh, it's just business, Mr. An Mrs. Anderson. Uh, go ahead, Mr. Nelson. Well, have you ever heard of C.J. Farrington? C.J. Farrington? Why, that's the richest man. Property out in the hills, and he wants someone to clear it off for him. Uh-huh. Chop down trees and cut away the brush. He'll pay $10 for every acre that's clear. $10 an acre? Good heavens, it's up $8 an acre already. Uh, you know how to handle that type of work, don't you, Mr. Day? Oh, sure. I can clean up all right. Oh, Clara Anderson, you fool. Tell him I'll be there first thing in the morning, Mr. Nelson. Maybe it's not too late. And thanks. Thanks very much. Goodbye. Dennis. <laughs> yes, ma'am? I've said some rather peculiar things to you every now and then, haven't I, dear? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> but you've always known that way down deep inside me, I adore you. Haven't you? No, ma'am. <laughs> I do, Dennis. You're the sweetest boy I've ever met. Mrs. Anderson, are you asking me to become the father of the girl I love? <laughs> Not dear boy. I just want a teensy weensy favor. Uh, this C.J. Farrington is a very wealthy man, isn't he? Farrington? Oh, yeah, he's loaded. Of course he is. He has all the money he needs. I don't see why he should have any more, do you? I'd rather not answer that. I might get investigated. <laughs> no, you don't understand, Dennis. You see, I want you to sell me that oil property at the original cost of $2 an acre. You do? Well, gosh. Okay, sure. <laughs> oh, you darling. I'll write you out a check for $200 immediately. But I don't understand, Mrs. Anderson. A minute ago, you said you wouldn't touch it with a 10-foot pole. Oh, well. You know that girls are always permitted to change their minds, don't you? Sure, but what's that got to do? Ooh, I nearly said. <laughs> Ten dollars, Mildred. Look, I gave your mother's check to those men, and they gave me ten whole dollars. I'm going to be rich. I'm going to become a real estate operator. I've always wanted yachts, servants, Cadillacs, and a bow tie that lights up. <laughs> but what I don't understand is why Mother bought oil land. It isn't like her. Did Mr. Farrington really offer ten dollars an acre for it? Huh? Gosh, no. He just offered me ten dollars an acre to clean off some... Oh, my... Oh, but she'll thank me when she becomes a millionaire. You mean if she becomes a millionaire? What did those two men look like, Dennis? Oh, just average-looking fellows. One was wearing a black and white checkered suit and had shifty eyes, and the other one was short, and the hair on his forehead came down to about... I could be in trouble, huh? I hope not, Dennis. We better see where the property's located. That's why I got out this map of Texas. Yeah, let's see what the deed says now. 20 miles due south of Galveston, Texas, and 75 miles west of Freeport. That would put it right about here on the map. There? Yeah, Gulf of Mexico. Oh, Dennis. Boy. Oh, well, we better call the police. We can't. I sold the land to your mother, and they'd arrest me. No, I'll go confess to your mother, and then she'll just... Yeah, let's call the police. No. No, you were right. We can't. Oh, there were only some way to get Mother's money back. To make those men think the oil property's really valuable. Yeah, sure, but what are we going to... Wait! Dennis, I think I've got it. Get your hat, quick. Why, yes, miss, who for you? Oh, Mr. Brown, you've got to help us. I'm private secretary to a very prominent newscaster. Our plane was forced down en route to New York, and he simply must be on the air immediately. Oh, I see. Uh, which newscaster is it? Raymond Grand Swing, Elmer Davis, Gabriel Hita, Lowell Thomas, Fulton Lewis, Jr.? Uh, I know them all personally. Uh, did you mention H.B. Taltonborn? No, I don't believe I ever met him. 
<laughs> you can come in now, Mr. Caltenborn. Good evening, everybody. Well, good evening, Mr. Caltenborn. This is a great honor, believe me. Thank you. You're the manager of this radio station? <laughs> Yes, sir, and my entire staff is at your disposal, sir. Splendid. Your efforts will be appreciated, I'm sure. <laughs> Fine. Now, is there anything I can get for you? Yes, this chair is a trifle hard. I'd like a nice, soft cushion. Yes, sir. <laughs> I'll be right back with it. Good work, Dennis. I'll run over to the hotel and make sure the radio in the lobby's real loud so those crooks will be sure to hear you. And when you get through, call Mother and tell her what's happened and what to expect. Okay, and if it doesn't work, you call the undertaker and tell him who to expect. <laughs> and so, the situation in Russia is grave indeed. Do they have to play that radio so loud? Relax, Duke. And now we leave the foreign news of Russia and Prussia and turn to the domestic scene concerning a Texas oil gutsia. A tremendous oil strike was made late this afternoon on the floor of the Gulf of Mexico. Sam, did you hear that? Yes, yeah, shut up a minute. The locality of the strike is believed to be 20 miles south of Galveston and 75 miles west of Freeport. Holy smoke, our Tidelands property! It is interesting to note how the discovery came up. The factory was squeezing a walleye pipe, expecting to extract cod liver oil. <laughs> Imagine his surprise when out squirted pure 100% Pennsylvania. Oh, come on, come on. We gotta get hold of that Mrs. Anderson. We gotta get that property back. In my life, I'm proud of you. Yeah, I'm a pretty smart guy at times. You certainly are. We could only figure out why the times are so far apart. <laughs> well, this time you were glorious. Oh, if you could only have seen those crooks' faces when I had my check back and told them how we tricked them with that fake broadcast. Gee, I'll bet it was wonderful. It was priceless. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Hi, Hi Mr. Anderson. Say, did you hear H.P. Calton? Did we? Oh! <laughs> I'll say we did. <laughs> I found the hotel who owned that oil property. And guess what? What? <laughs> but they couldn't have heard the broadcast because they sold me the entire property for $10 an acre. Oh, no. No. You can explain. I'm going down to inspect the property. Dennis Day, you started this. Wait a minute. Mr. Anderson, I'll get my bathing suit and go with you. <laughs> Colgate Dental Cream cleans your breath while it cleans your teeth. No other toothpaste does a better job of cleaning teeth than Colgate Dental Cream. For Colgate Dental Cream has a safe polishing agent that cleans your teeth both gently and thoroughly. Brings out their natural sparkle and beauty. You can actually see and feel the difference. And scientific tests prove that Colgate Dental Cream cleans your breath while it cleans your teeth. Yes, actual scientific tests prove conclusively that in 7 out of 10 cases... Colgate instantly stops unpleasing breath that originates in the mouth. Colgate Dental Cream is famous for its wonderful wake-up flavor, too. Nationwide tests of leading toothpastes prove that Colgate's is preferred for flavor over every other brand tested. Yes, preferred over every other brand tested. And no wonder, for Colgate Dental Cream is the result of constant effort to produce the finest toothpaste in the world today. For cleaning teeth, for flavor... For sweetening breath. So see if you don't agree with the millions who have made Colgate Dental Cream America's Colgate Dental Cream. Give your teeth early and joy. And always use Colgate Dental Cream after you eat and before every date to clean your breath while you clean your teeth. In answer to so many requests, here's Dennis with George Dooning and the orchestra to sing Because. Because you come to me oh, and hold my hand and lift mine eyes above a wide world of hope 
and joy I see. Tune in to another Dennis Day show brought to you by Palm Olive Soap, Your Beauty Hope, and Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth. For soft, gleaming, glamorous hair, Try Luster Cream Shampoo. Not a soap, not a liquid, but a dainty new cream shampoo. In tubes or jars, whichever you prefer. Be a lovely Luster Cream girl. Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful Luster Cream girl. You owe your crowning glory to a Luster Cream Shampoo. Listen again next week to Colgate's Hour of Fun, Judy Canova, followed by Dennis Day. And for another great comedy program, hear Blondie next Wednesday evening over your favorite NBC station. Vern Smith speaking. Good night. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.